Hey everybody, in this lesson we're going to talk about lesson number 8, periodic trends. Now, the big idea, big idea here is that the periodic table presents many trends into the properties of various elements. So let's talk about the atomic radii, the size of the atom. How does that differ when we talk about the periodic table? Well, we know that electrons repel each other because they're negative charge. Which means that if you have more electrons, it will mean more repulsion. And it should also, that means be a larger atom. Okay, what else? Well, more electrons also means more shells. Which also means a larger atom. So if you flip your page over to the next page, you will see a diagram showing you the size of each atom with regards to its, so these numbers are what we call picometer. So as you can see, each element gets larger as they go down each column. So hydrogen, lithium is larger than hydrogen, sodium is larger than lithium, and so forth. You can see krypton is larger than argon, which is larger than neon. But wait, did we just say more electrons means a larger atom? If we, because doesn't beryllium have more electrons than lithium? Doesn't nitrogen have more electrons than carbon? Why is it that their size is getting smaller? So the reason why it gets smaller across each row, so radii gets smaller across each row due to more proton electron attraction. So if you look at it, you might go, okay, n uh, nitrogen should have more electrons, but it also has more protons than carbon. And thus, yes, it does have more electrons, but it sucks in electrons more because it has protons, more protons. So just note that the radii gets smaller across each row due to more proton-electron attraction. But how does that differ for ions? Well, let's take a look. If you're talking about a positive ion, which usually are, is our metals, this will happen is that they actually are smaller than atom. Now why is that? Well, positive ion means remove electrons, which means less repulsion. So that's the reason why they get smaller. How does that differ from a negative ion? A negative ion, which is our non-metals, these are larger than atom because if you add electrons into for example oxygen you will have more repulsion because for ion the number of protons stays the same so what we have here then is that we will see that we have a question that says what is larger so if you look at the first example here, you're comparing between fluorine and fluorine negative ion. So look at fluorine and fluorine negative ion, both of them has 9 protons. But this fluorine here has 10 electrons. And because of that, this fluorine is going to be larger. Okay, let's look at the next example. Oxygen versus fluorine. Oxygen is to the left of fluorine on the periodic table. And because it's to the left of fluorine on the periodic table, it actually will be larger. Now, if you don't believe this, pull the periodic table real quickly. We know that as we go from left to right, the element gets smaller because of proton-electron attraction. So thus, oxygen is actually a larger element. Lastly, sodium lithium. What do we know about them? Well, lithium is right here. Sodium is right here. Sodium has more shells. So it is more, much larger. Okay, let's start with the next trend, which we call ionization energy. Ionization energy is the energy 
needed to remove an electron. Okay, it's the energy needed to remove electron. It doesn't matter if it's a if it's a nonmetal or a metal. It's just the energy needed to remove electron. So ionization energy, which we'll call I E, is the amount of energy needed to remove an electron. So what it will lead to is it turns it into a positive ion. Okay. So an example of that would be if you take sodium and you add some ionization energy into it, it's going to turn into sodium plus plus electron. Or you could even do this with oxygen. If you take oxygen, you add enough ionization energy into it, it will turn to oxygen positive. That's strange, that looks weird, but you can do that plus an electron. So, let's take a look at this graph. This table here is actually to show you what majority of the elements are in terms of how much energy you need. So you see the hydrogen needs 1312. You see that you see the number increases as you go across. So why is that? Why is it that you, when you go across, the number increases, but the number decreases as you go down? Well, let's take a look. In this example, why do some atoms need more energy than others? Well, let's see. The farther the valence electrons are from nucleus, which usually means more shells, this will lead to in less attraction. And thus, it's easier to remove. And this is why it decreases as you go down, because as you go down the periodic table, the number, the number of electrons goes, as you see, the number of energy needed goes down. OK. Well, let's take a look at why is it that we go across it is larger. Well, as you increase proton electron attraction, it means the electrons are harder to remove, which means because that you have a higher IE. So if you want to put this on your, your PR table, you can see that the ionization energy will do this. So you would see the ionization energy as it goes across left to right, it will, so IE will increase. As you go downwards, IE will decrease. Likewise, if you look at your the um, the atomic radii one, you can do the same thing. If you go across, you're going to notice that the atomic radii, the radii, will decrease. And as you go down, the radii will increase. So it's the opposite of ionization energy. OK. So what you're going to notice is the largest ionization energy is helium. Helium has the largest one. Well, cesium has the smallest one in this case. Okay, so let's go to the next, the last trend we're going to talk about today. What is the trend of electronegativity? Now, we heard this term before electronegativity. It is how much an element wants electrons. It's So En equals how much an element wants electrons. So that means what that means is high En equals wants electrons. And if it's low En, low En equals wants to give away electrons. So what's going on here? Well, in this case, if an atom has high En, it 
will not want to give away its electrons. Because they're strongly attached to their own electrons. Well, if they don't want to give away electrons, that means they're really attracted to it. Well, what you're going to notice is that this leads to high EN, electronegativity, means high ionization energy. So let's take a look at this number chart that shows high ionization energy, or in this case, high electronegativity. We will see that these noble gases here don't have any because they do not need electrons. So they, thus they don't have electronegativity. But what you notice is that En, in this case, as you go down, electronegativity goes down. And the reason why it's going down is because, again, it has less need for electrons, so thus it need, wants to get away. Low electronegativity wants to give away because it also has a low ionization energy. Well, if you go this way from left to right, electronegativity increases, and this is because it wants electrons. Fluorine is the element that has the highest electronegativity. That means if it's be any elements beside fluorine, it will want electrons away from them. And this will come to play when we talk more about bonding. So fluorine wants electrons. It doesn't want to give it away. If, so that's what we have to state there. Now, don't worry too much about this number system right here. We're going to talk more about that eventually. But what I want you to do is, for homework, is this. there's a lot of pages here to do. But I want you to practice looking at which elements larger, different trends. As always, make sure you keep yourself safe and healthy. And I'll see you soon.